Okay, I'm back. Um, we're going to do the CG now. All I've done is I've just, in this case because I'm too lazy to go get a building board and use pins and whatnot, I've just used a bit of press stick to kind of tack my CGers into place. I actually managed to do it without even doing that, but this will hold it more, be more stable. So what I'm going to do now is try to get the center of gravity set on this. You don't have to really draw anything, lines, or measure anything because what you have to do is get the model so that it's just barely not actually touching. You don't, you don't actually want it touching against the stops. You want it just after the stop so that it can tilt freely. Um, so that'll allow it to drift up and down as you add or remove tack. Right. So right now I've got no nose weight and so the tail just drops down immediately. So the way I do this is I'm just going to use a little bit of this press stick and I make like a little stirrup, a little horseshoe shape and I add that to the nose and we see what happens. So let's see, is that enough to balance her out? Oh boy, it's no, no, not enough. So I need to add something to that. So I'm going to take a little bit more, take my little horseshoe off, you can make it nice and long. This way it's you don't have to actually stick it to the glider nose. You can just sort of dra you know, you can just drop it over the nose and see if you get the desired result. Nope, need a bit more. So again, um, one thing I was going to say is that uh, if you're flying this with kids, you know, if if you're really serious about you know high performance cat glider, well, first of all, you wouldn't build this version. You'd build the version with the thicker wing, and you do an airfoil and all the rest of it. But uh, with kids, or if you're doing a classroom project, or you're flying with the grandkids, you may actually want to just use putty or press stick or something for your nose weight, and not use lead or a nail or anything hard, because Something, again, if one of your kids, you know, you know how it is with the kids, before you know it, they've done something, you can't, you barely have time to even keep an eye on them. And so if whatever's happened, happens with a blob of prestic on the nose, it's just less likely to be uh, a life-changing event. Uh, whereas if you've got a nail on the nose, and this goes into someone's eye, it's probably going to go into their eye. It's getting there, it's getting there. Oh, I'm stuck against the stops. Need a little bit more. I'm just gonna do that. So yeah, so for any flying you're doing with kids or youngsters or even inexperienced cat glider enthusiasts, you know, starting with clay or press stick is not a bad idea. It just makes everything a bit safer. See, I'm getting very close now. Just need a little bit more weight, and then I'll be on the money. Oh, there we go. That was enough to actually tilt me forward. So now it's actually resting on my little press stick. It's actually resting on the CG or arms. So I can take a little fraction of a little tiny blob away now. And hopefully I'll be on the sweet spot. My buddy Tony Matthews, who's an absolute wizard at all things air modeling and others, uh, he actually puts the tail of the model on a scale and will add Prestic until the scale reads zero, meaning it's perfectly balanced. I'm not doing that, but you can see now when I touch it, it actually it comes back, the tail drops very slowly, so I'm just a whisker, just the tiniest little piece is needed now to balance the model. So let's try it again. Oh, that little tiny piece I added tipped her forward again. I'm going to break that little piece in half. It's so sensitive. But the idea here is that once you've found the right setting the CG, it's a bit of a, a bit involved, but once you've got it, you don't touch it again. 
and the airplane is likely to just fly fine. Boy, I took just the tiniest whisker off and it's now tail heavy again. So really fine tuning this. You have to be careful not to rub up against the stops because that will actually prevent the model from balancing. Oh, so close. Tiny little lob needed here. There we go. The model's tail is, you see now it actually doesn't touch down, it floats just, it's still a touch, tiny little touch of clay needed for or to be right on the money. There you go. That is basically perfect. You can see it took a while. It took like five minutes to six minutes to find the right amount of clay. But now the model is sitting horizontal. Um, and so I know how much clay I need. Let me take this off now and weigh it for you. Wow, that needed exactly to three significant figures, one gram of clay. I am amazed. Huh. That is really amazing. Exactly one gram. Let's see if I move it. Oh yeah, one gram. So that's a good starting point for you uh, when you build one. If you use less glue on the stab, you'll need less than one gram. If you use more, you'll need more. If you use the same as me, you'll be right at or very close to one gram. So the way I would do this if I was flying out with kids is I would just stick that blob of clay right there on the nose. And that way if someone gets shot in the face, they're not going to have, they're not going to be impaled uh, with a catapult glider. Okay, so the next step, which I cannot show you, is because I haven't, I just realized I forgot to cut them today when I was laser cutting, uh, would be to glue on the launch peg, which is just basically a piece of plywood, 132nd ply, which will sit somewhere in a position like, like that. Okay, it'll be flush with the base of the wing um, and stick below the fuselage by about quarter inch and uh, that's what you'll actually use to launch. Uh, you'll hook the rubber on that and then at the tail here I've made these little sandpaper, laser cut sandpaper um, grips. You can see one there. There's a whole bunch of them here. So in the kit I'll include a bunch of these and they get glued on to the back. So I'll just do that real quick course that's going to change my CG. So I spent all that time showing you how to adjust the CG. I'm going to glue these on here now and everything's going to change. It'll be like 1.2 grams or something like that. Um, but no matter. Uh, I won't uh, bore you with that exercise again. You already know how to do it. So yeah, you just glue that on there. And one on the other side. And I just use CA, works well enough for this task. Gives you thicker CA, gives you a second to kind of get it positioned and it spreads nice and thin. You can use whatever glue you prefer, contact cement or uh, something else. So now it's got a really firm grip. I can hold that with a high amount of stretch. Of course, now the rubber, you know, it's definitely not going to balance now because I've just added a bunch of nose weight out at the end of a long tail moment arm. So. Yep, didn't balance 
Gonna have to add some. Let's see how much I need. Of course, the nose moment is much shorter, right? So you're gonna need more. That was a pretty darn good guess. First blob and bang, she's balanced. So what difference did that make? We'll weigh it. So with the, yeah, so that took me up 0 0.0167. There you go. So just over a gram of nose weight is what's needed. So let's weigh the model. This simplest version of this glider, it'd be easier to do it this way, weighs in at four and a half grams. Let me make sure I might actually, maybe it's more than that. There we go, 4.8 grams. That's the, the simple version. B5.1 or 5.2 when you've glued in the, uh, the launch hook. And uh, that'll be that. So that's the video for how to make one of these guys. Uh, next video you'll see is probably me flying one. All right, have a good night.